Hey guys, welcome back. So today it's the first day of my weekend off and I'm back out here trying to finish up this wall here in the pole barn. So we just got done putting on uh, a few more sheets of the plywood siding and we've got it all the way over here to the garage door. And if you look behind me back here, you're gonna notice that there's still two feet at the top that's not covered. Um, we're gonna cover that with the exact same stuff. We're gonna take some of this plywood siding, we're gonna put that and fill in that two foot gap that's up there. Hopefully we're gonna line up all the grooves and make everything look nice and neat so everything lines up. There will end up being a seam where those two stack on top of each other, but that's gonna be 12 feet in the air. So I'm hoping that that seam is not gonna be uh, very noticeable because I'm not really planning on doing anything else but button them together. We'll have to wait and see how it turns out, but let's go ahead. We're gonna start cutting these pieces out and filling in the top here. So one of these sheets should get us four pieces cut out from it. And I'm just gonna put some two by fours under there. So when I cut it, they don't break off and fall to the ground. It's just gonna help keep it all nice and even while I cut it. So I've got a Bora clamp on guide and you can clamp this on here and use it as a saw guide. I've already put some marks on here for where to put it. So I try to make sure the saw is not cutting very deep. Um, that way I don't cut up the two by fours too much. Well, I feel like I'm, something ain't right. I'm on the wrong line. I've already screwed this one up. I am on the wrong line. See, I should check that. Saw mark is not gonna be perfect. Let's see if we can salvage this somehow. So there'll be just a little bit of a dip right here. Hopefully we don't notice that on the ceiling. There we go. There's our first piece right there to go on the ceiling. See how bad this is. Oh, that's not too bad. It's probably dipped down less than an eighth of an inch. I don't think it'll be too noticeable. I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So I did go ahead and I marked this board every two feet so I could have a reference point so I could square everything up again. And that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take about a half inch off this side, square this bottom up, and then we'll go ahead and start cutting out the rest of our pieces. So one thing I found that this clamp's actually fairly handy for is marking these sheets of plywood when you're alone. You don't have to try to hold a straight edge and lean way out. It actually works fairly well. So I'm gonna just stain the bottom of these just to make sure that it doesn't, you know, any of that blonde wood doesn't show since we just made a fresh cut here. And for some reason I missed a little bit on this one. Got about half the bottom stained when I did it. I missed it.
So we've got the gap up at the top all filled in now. We've got the uh, plywood siding all the way to right here. And when we were building this wall, we were very careful to make sure that um, everything was 16 inch spacing, the studs were, all the way from that side, all the way over here. And as we put this blocking in, we would take a measuring tape and we would double check and we would adjust this blocking uh, appropriately to keep our 16 inch spacing. And that, what that allowed us to do is that allowed us to be able to put our nails right in these grooves. So then every two grooves, we have nails going up and down. And, you know, that's pretty important just to make sure that, you know, you're always lining that groove up with the stud. Now, what I've come to realize now that we've got to the garage door is that I ended up making a few mistakes when I was putting this wall up. So where I screwed up was, is this side over here, I built from this wall and worked this way, and it's all based off of that wall. So I've got a 16 inch center off of that wall heading this direction, and those two patterns don't meet. So now, um, what's gonna happen if I continue on with my wood siding, none of the nails are gonna end up being in the grooves. That I would have to nail them on the face. And I would prefer to hide as many in the grooves if I, as I can. Um, so, so there's probably two different choices here. Um, one, I, well, I don't want to rip this all out, right? So the two choices without ripping everything out on this side would be to install new studs. So I could put new studs in up here and base it 16 inch on center from this side and work my way back that direction, putting in all new studs. Um, but I don't have 14 foot tall studs to fit in over here on this side. Uh, the second choice would be maybe to work the, the paneling from that way and work it this direction. And then somewhere over here on this side of the garage door, they're not gonna match up. So then you would, you would cut it and you would try to make them match as best as possible, but you're gonna end up with one section there that's not gonna be an eight inch spacing. You're gonna have like a six inch spacing in there where your odd cut is. And so you're gonna, you're gonna see that, that it's not completely even. And I guess there is a third choice. We just continue that way and I face nail everything and, uh, and, just, and then that's just the way it is. So the nails will be a lot more visible on this side. So what I think I'm gonna do is I do have a little bit of two by four material. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put new two by fours and start working that way across the garage door header and at least put um, little studs in there so I can continue on to that side. And then we'll kind of, once we get to that side of the garage door, we'll reevaluate and see what we want to do. But that's, that's how we're going to start off. I'm just going to go ahead and put some little studs in there and keep working that way. So I'm just going to measure from the side of this stud and mark one and a half inch space where the new stud will go to keep our 16 inch spacing. So now that I've got the plywood siding across the garage door header and I'm to this side of the room, I now realize that the stud spacing here is not related to the spacing that was in the header. See, I built this as three sections. I built that side, I built this side, and then I came back and I built the header that went in between. And, and all three of those were not related to each other in any way. Um, so the reason I got here, the, what I was thinking in my head um, I was thinking I needed a 16 inch spacing for insulation. I wasn't even thinking about the plywood. I was thinking for insulation, as long as I space these, you know, 16 inches apart, my insulation will go in here just fine. And um, that's where I got off the day I built the wall. Now, the day I came in here and I put the blocking in for the plywood, that day I realized, hey, I need to make sure that this stud spacing stays the same all the way across or else my plywood groove and the plywood will get off. And um, of course I only put the blocking in so far and today I'm finally realizing that all these studs were off. So that was my huge problem is I, when I put all of my, the studs framing this wall out, I should have referenced one side and it needed to stay a 16 inch center from that side all the way across. 
Um, so that's really kind of screwed me up today. Um, but I think overall we're going to be able to get this in and it won't be too much of a rework. So we're just going to scab. So the good thing is, is we're only an inch off now. That's the funny thing. After we, we were like six inches off up there, but now that we got over here, we're only like an inch off. So I can actually just scab a two by four to the side of this and we'll be back on track. So I'm going to go uh, grab some two by fours um, and we're going to scab some onto the side of these two and then we'll be back on track to match the stud pattern over there and should be able to get the wall up just fine. So I guess in some ways I'm actually kind of lucking out today. These are my last two two by fours and they are 10 foot long and it's perfect to go up to the ceiling and come down to the bottom of the plywood siding is gonna be. Um, and these are my last two. So this is gonna work out just perfect. Well, the 10 sheets that I made up were not enough. <laughs> I had to end up making sanding and staining a whole nother sheet. That's just the way it works out. So I'm gonna try to get this one in here. We're gonna try to get it to line up with the grooves up above. Yeah, to me that looks good. I'm just gonna go ahead and tack it in place. And you can see we didn't quite keep the exact same pattern. We overlapped about eight inches, but uh, I think that's going to work out fine for us. Oh, whoops. There's no, <laughs> there's no stud there. That's a, that's a decorative nail now, I guess. All right, last piece. Thank goodness, ready for this. So today has been a fairly long day so far. We just got done finishing the uh, plywood siding on the walls. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this done. I really wanna get this done today. So the next is the corrugated metal, the old corrugated barn metal. We're gonna just use some, some pole barn screws, rift screws. And we're just gonna put that along the wall along the bottom here and we're gonna that'll overlap um, somewhere close to an inch and a half two inches it's gonna overlap so I'm just gonna start slapping that on there and just go across here and hopefully I said this was gonna be the quickest part and hopefully it is so uh, we're gonna try to get all the metal on real quick and finish this up All right, I got the wall all covered. We got the galvanized metal on there. I've got everything swept up and cleaned up for the evening. And I'm pretty happy with what we got done today. Now, I don't have the trim between where the wood and the galvanized corrugated metal meet. Um, I need to wait until I trim out the doors. I need to get the door mounted over here and get it trimmed out. And I probably need to wait till the garage doors on and trimmed out before I I can do all the trim work and, and get that board in between there and, and dress that out a little bit. But 
very happy with what we have now. Um, it is uh, it is almost eight o'clock. In about five more minutes, it'll be eight p.m. tonight. It's been a long day, um, but I think now. I should hold a little bit of heat in here. I know there's no insulation in this wall or in the ceiling, but it should at least hold heat a little bit better. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably put a tarp over this garage door and just kind of tarp that off so that the air can stay in here. And I may do the same for this door until we get it mounted. And then it should hold a little bit of heat. I know there's no insulation. I do have the insulation to put in this wall. And then in the ceiling, what we're going to do is we're going to put in some blown in insulation on top of that metal. And uh, I'm not sure exactly when we're going to do that. Um, I will have to seal around the outlets and around the ceiling fan connection and everything up there so none of the, um, you know, blown in insulation falls down. I'll also have to tuck some insulation in the sides of the walls so that the blown in insulation don't fall down the walls. So there's a lot of prep before I can ever put the blown in insulation in. But that is the plan. It'll be coming here eventually. But uh, I'm very happy to finally have this done and closed in. And then hopefully once I get some tarps on there, um, it'll be a little warmer in here. Maybe we can start doing some other things besides working on the walls in here. So I know I said it in another video, I'm hoping to bring the Alice Chalmers tractor in here and be able to do some work on it here pretty soon. So I think now that this wall is closed in, I should be able to, to do that and maybe we can start on another project and at least not be the same thing over and over and over. Uh, it's nice to be able to bounce around from project to project. So maybe I can uh, get the tractor in here, do a little bit on that and then get back out to the bank barn out there and finish working on it as well. And uh, I got a little modifications to do to the barnyard out there and uh, yeah, there's a few things we want to do out at the old barn as well. So hopefully we can bounce around between a few projects now, now that we've got this wall up here and hopefully we can hold in maybe a little bit of heat so I can do some other projects in here. But uh, like I said, it is, it is almost eight o'clock and it's been a long day, so I'm gonna call it a night. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.